Considering the huge success of Andy Muschietti's It and the apparent revival in the horror genre, it was inevitable that there'd be a fairly big cloud of hype around the first trailer for the sequel. Everything we've seen so far, from the casting news to the promises that'll be even weirder and even scarier, suggested that we're in for a wild white knuckle ride, and now that trailer is here. It looks like those expectations were nailed on. It's creepy, it trades on the audience appreciation of Bill Skarsgård's beautifully odd titular character, and there's a very real sense that the director is delivering more of the same while also pushing in new directions. In other words, he's making a successful sequel. Even from this early look that's left a pretty big mark, if it's not one of the most viewed trailers of the year, there's something seriously wrong. But, as ever, it's not perfect, and it's important to have a look both at the high point and what maybe didn't work quite so well. So, here are my thoughts on IT Chapter 2. First, the negatives. Number 3, the switch to a Superman score. The opening build is very, very good, and it's a great choice to show an abridged version of one key scene, as the majority of the trailer's runtime, but it works precisely because it depends on simple, signifiers of creepiness. It's all about the power of the audience's own persuasion. What we don't see or hear or understand is what's most scary. That's why the pared down music and creepy sounds work so well. So it's somewhat jarring when the trailer's other footage kicks in and you're basically assaulted by a Hans Zimmer boom out out of nowhere. Sure, it's an audio assault, but it doesn't work nearly as well as something more creepy and less bombastic would have been. Like, it's a cliche, but why not some circus music building to that hello from Pennywise? Number two, the dangers of a backstory. As Solo has told us all fairly recently, there's a bit of an issue with films seeking to demystify iconic mysterious characters. In the books, Pennywise is scarier because he's a phenomenon, torn out of imagination, rather than a real-world character pulled into eternal existence. There is a huge danger here that by seeking to offer too many answers to the mystery of Pennywise, the film will remove some of the magic. After all, part of the point of the creature is that he's partly inexplicable beyond the logic that he feeds on fear. To define him is kind of to limit him. Admittedly, there'd be room for the backstory we see in the trailer to be faked by Pennywise, as a specific haunting for Beverly, linked to her own relationship with her father, but there have been rumors they were seeking to add a backstory for a while. Let's just hope it isn't too much of a plot point, because it's too distracting. Number 1. It could have done more of the adult cast. Because of the choice to have such a lengthy single scene for the first half of the trailer, there's something of a compromise on how much screen time the older version of Losers Club gets. And that's a shame when we all know how incredible the casting is. Perhaps it's simply because of impatience, but it would have been nice to have seen more moments for the others beyond James McAvoy and Jessica Chastain. Because everyone else deserves as much focus at this stage, it's likely we'll see the second trailer pull in tighter to the club. Admittedly, and this is by no means a fatal issue, but it would be wrong not to mention it too. At least we get a reminder of how amazing the cast is, though. And now to the positives. Number 7. The Atmospherics. The weird musical choice aside, that extended scene between Jessica Chastain and Pennywise's daughter is brilliant at reminding everyone that it wasn't just about jump scares and the Pennywise show. It was about slow builds, uneasiness, and the art of imagination manipulation. All of that is a lot better at making an audience take the horror film home than simple cheap scares. That scene is an absolute triumph, relying on old tropes, simple artistic decisions like darkness and uneven camera framing, and the subtle audio accompaniment to let you know something bad is happening well before the visuals even catch up to your heartbeat. If the rest of the film is as good with building tension without showing a great deal and captures the right balance between that and making everything about Pennywise, it'll be amazing. Number 6. Just Enough Pennywise Andy Muschietti and Warner Brothers had one big selling point beyond all others that they could have really lent against to build the hype for this movie to white-hot levels. Bill Skarsgård's ludicrously effective Pennywise. He 
looks phenomenal, he sounds great, and he does that eye thing that comes back to you when you're trying to walk up the stairs in the dark at 3 a.m. and you don't have to do a little run so the monsters don't catch you. Maybe that's just me. Anyways, the true brilliance of this trailer is that Pennywise is barely in it. We get a couple of shots of him doing his usual weird things and reminding everyone that the minute you think this is just a coming of age or nostalgic finding yourself sort of story, it's actually a vehicle for him to rip a hole in your chest with your own heartbeat and run icy fingers down your spine. Guys, I'm just really scared, okay? The restraint in not just going full minion syndrome and dialing his presence up to intoxicating levels is very, very admirable. And there's just enough in there to sell the return of Myron Horror's favorite clown son. And speaking of restraint, Number 5. It keeps the weird to itself, for now. Almost as soon as the first film was released, the director explained that he had avoided the overt weirdness of Stephen King's original novel as a very conscious decision. When you watch that film back in the context of the Stranger Things-inspired tide of affection for King's more gently nostalgic horrors, it makes a lot of sense and it's all pretty smart. But he has also promised that the second film was going to dial everything up to far weirder levels. That's great for the fans who like weirdness, but selling that too heavily at this stage would have been a major mistake. For one, it's not what fans who primarily know the film and not the source material would expect. And you invite accusations of misunderstanding your core audience. That's not so much an issue when you build it within the film but to lead with it is jarring. And then for anyone who saw the overappreciated TV miniseries, again, Tim Curry's Pennywise is to be cherished, but the rest of it is poor, reminding us that this all gets weirder, and it's a big fat red flag that the bloody spider crab thing might come along and ruin everything. And neither of those are particularly strong selling points. So the restraint in keeping it mostly more of the same is very, very smart as a director. Number four, it keeps the spoilers down too. Aside for a general feeling that something isn't wrong and confirming that the Losers Club is back together and Pennywise is back in town, the trailer here shows great restraint in not setting out its stall too obviously by spoiling everything. By stuffing the runtime with the scene between Bathilda, Bagshot's sister, and Jessica Chastain, there's not a lot of room for the trailer team to put in anything that looks like much of anything. So it works like a good old-fashioned mood board trailer does. We don't get enough to look at the cast, but we do get a lot of emotions, and that's an easy win for selling something like this. Number 3, The Very Real Sense of Dread and one of the most pertinent and pressing emotions in there is dread, which is exactly what you'd want both from a sequel trailer and a horror of this nature. The key to this film being a success wasn't just about doing what the original did, even though that's initially what guarantees an audience. They also implicitly expect escalation, and the best way to achieve that is to make it very clear that absolutely everyone is potentially dead meat. Even with the limited screen time to play with, we get shots of most of the principal cast either under threat or clearly feeling some sort of terrible emotion. And remarkably, the trailer manages to convince of that ominous feeling without showing Pennywise interacting with anyone in any real way. We needed to know that these grown-ups are just as troubled and just as in danger as their younger selves, and this trailer not only delivers on that expectation, but surpasses it. They look terrified, and that's exactly what we're all here for. Number 2. The Balance of Old and New While this is very much the second part of a story that started in a completely separate time period, Warner Brothers and the filmmaking team have rather cleverly realized that casting aside the original cast and storylines would have been a mistake. We were told very early on that the young stars who own that movie so much would return, and by the look of it, there's a very healthy slice of time spent back when they were young. It makes sense when you think about it. Pennywise is very much tied to those young life experiences, and to the ghosts that still hang around their adult counterparts. 
Vanquishing it wasn't the end of their trauma, and no medicine for the wounds they carried from the rest of their lives. So it's great that they're going back in time. Plus, those performances deserve more screen time and anything that helps that has got to be a win. Number one, it's really creepy. When it boils right down to the bones, horror fans want one thing from their horror films. They want to be creeped out, and they want to be terrified. They want to not forget the scariest moments no matter how awful they are to watch at the time. We never feel quite as alive as when our pulses are racing towards a catastrophic cardiac event. Because the closer you are to death, the sweeter life tastes. Which means that My Chemical Romance has a lot to answer for. Anyways, this trailer lathers it on perfectly. Absolutely nailing the atmosphere and the creepiness and then offering a machine gun edit of some of the film's standout moments that promise even more of the same. We get to see Pennywise's sinister naked daughter. We get to see an actual bloodbath in the return of Georgie. And then, it all comes to that delicious, unnerving crescendo when Pennywise rubs his hands and says hello. But because the images and the builds have worked so effectively, those simple actions and the Pennywise actor's wonderfully strange physical performance combine to bring the house down. It's great, guys, and the film looks like it's going to be great, too. What did you think of the trailer? Share your reaction in the comments below. And that was seven positives and three negatives. I'll see you in the next video.